Have you ever experienced the often embarrassing discomfort that comes along with abdominal cramping, bloating, and gas right after you've eaten something? If so, you're not alone. So many people have, I know I have too. And that could be because your body is sensitive to some of the foods that you're eating. My name is Adrienne Rommel. I'm a holistic nutritionist that specializes in holistic nutrition and wellness for women's sexual health. And I'm here today to talk about the foods that make us bloated and that can often make us look and feel like we're five months pregnant. The discomfort of abdominal bloating, cramping, and gas can be really embarrassing and can often affect people that struggle with candida, overgrowth, IBS, and other digestive health issues that are connected to your gut, like leaky gut or SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And it can be really frustrating because when you are chronically getting this abdominal cramping, bloating, and gas, it can affect your life in so many ways because it not only feels physically discomfort, but when you have to start adjusting your wardrobe to the fact that you are feeling bloated, that's when you know there's a problem. And because this is a gut health issue, your diet is really important. Diet is so important when it comes to managing and preventing abdominal cramping, bloating, and gas. And I'm gonna share with you the top foods that can cause a lot of this abdominal cramping and gas for a lot of people. These FODMAP foods are notorious for creating gut health issues and discomfort like abdominal bloating, cramping, and gas, but also inflammation, stomach pain, diarrhea, and constipation, all common symptoms for people who struggle with IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome, but also people who struggle with gut health issues like leaky gut and candida overgrowth. There are so many FODMAP foods, too much to list them all in this one video, but a lot of the FODMAP foods are very common and foods that are found in a lot of different dishes, especially if you are eating out and you're wondering, why is my stomach so bloated? Why do I feel so uncomfortable after a meal out? And it's because these FODMAP foods are almost in everything, everywhere. Some really common FODMAP foods include onions and garlic, which are pretty much in everything, broccoli, cabbage, wheat, mangoes, legumes, and foods that are high in fructose, lactose, and other sugar alcohols that end with an OL, like xylitol, and any other artificial sweeteners that end with an OSE, like sucrose. There are many common fruits that are high FODMAP as well, like apples, blackberries, cherries, watermelon, date, figs, and mangoes, just to name a few. Dairy products are also high FODMAP because of the lactose. So milk, ice cream, sour cream, cheese, those can also be high FODMAP and create a lot of food sensitivities for people, creating that abdominal cramping, bloating, and gas. So if you are noticing any kind of sensitivities after you eat those foods, it may be because you have a food sensitivity to high FODMAP foods. So many people struggle with sensitivities to these FODMAP foods. If you feel like you may be sensitive to some of the things that I mentioned, I invite you to do a little bit more research to see a complete list of the FODMAP foods, which you can find easily by doing a Google search and finding different articles about which foods are high in FODMAP, and just noticing how you feel after you eat certain foods. If it's a mild reaction, you may or may not have a sensitivity to these foods, but if this reaction in your body is chronic, meaning you have this all the time and it is starting to affect your lifestyle, that's when you may have a FODMAP sensitivity and it's worth looking into, it's worth even journaling your symptoms every time you eat something to see if you can identify a pattern in the foods that you're eating and how your body is reacting and then even doing an elimination diet to eliminate those foods completely for at least a month and then reintroduce those foods slowly to see how your body reacts. And when your body gives you a negative reaction, you know that you have a food sensitivity to those foods and it may be worth eliminating from your diet or just enjoying them in moderation. 
Number two is cruciferous vegetables. As I mentioned before, cruciferous vegetables contain sulfur, which can create a lot of smelly gas and abdominal cramping, bloating, and discomfort for a lot of people. Some of the cruciferous vegetables include, the most common ones include garlic, onions, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and cauliflower, but there may be some unsuspecting ones that you didn't know about, like arugula, bok choy, and wasabi. Number three, as I mentioned before, is gluten. And gluten is a protein found in a lot of wheat products as well as grains, like oats, for example. Sometimes you can get oats that are gluten-free, but usually they never really are gluten-free because they're combined in with other oats that are not gluten-free. So you have to be really careful when you do buy gluten-free oats and also any other grains to make sure that they're not combined with products that contain gluten. Some people are really sensitive to gluten and some people not so much. Again, you just have to learn and know about how your body specifically reacts after you eat things that contain gluten, like bread, pizza, pasta, crackers, different cereals, etc. Number four is fruits, and I mentioned this earlier because fruits contain fructose, which is sugar, and a lot of people are sensitive to that. So some of the fruits that are high in FODMAP are apples and pears. One of the things that is really high in FODMAP, and I notice that I'm sensitive to, is dried fruits. We all love, who doesn't love dried apricots and dried anything, dried mangoes. We all love them because they're really sweet and chewy but they are really, really high in sugar and also high in FODMAP. So you just have to notice how your body reacts after you eat those things and really try to limit those from your diet if you are sensitive to them. And last but not least, number five, fizzy drinks. I think all of us drink fizzy drinks in today's society. A lot of us drink fizzy drinks with our meals. Carbonated beverages are gas, are basically carbonation in liquid. So when you drink them, of course, you're gonna feel the abdominal bloating and the gas and the belching afterwards. And they are especially bad to drink in combination with food. So you just wanna be mindful of your fizzy drink intake, whether you're drinking soda, pop, or sparkling water, even in alcohol. You just wanna be mindful of the fizzy drinks and how much you're drinking, especially if you are noticing the discomfort of abdominal cramping, bloating, and gas. Bloating can also come with the way that we're eating. When you eat too fast and you're not chewing your food properly, it doesn't give your food a proper amount of time and a proper way to digest properly through the digestive tract. So you wanna try to eat as slow as possible. I know for me that's hard to do because I'm a fast eater. And be mindful of fully chewing your food. Also hard for me because I just wanna eat everything <laughs> really fast and make sure that you're not, and try to limit your distractions when you're eating, like watching TV or being on social media while you're eating because it can lead to a mindless eating, as I call it. So you don't even notice you're eating, you're just eating, you're, you're just automatically eating, but you're not even really enjoying your food, number one, or two, pay attention to, paying attention to how you eat. So you wanna make sure that you are eating mindfully, trying to chew your food as much as possible and eating slowly. I know it's hard to do, but that's also really important if you are somebody that struggles with chronic bloating, abdominal cramping, and gas. So now the moment you've all been waiting for, I've got tips on how to help you relieve this abdominal cramping, bloating, gas, and discomfort if you are experiencing this chronically especially. Number one, peppermint tea is really great to drink after you eat meals. Same as ginger tea because it helps to aid the digestive process and is really calming to your gut and they're both anti-inflammatories, especially for your gut. So drinking some herbal tea like peppermint, ginger, even chamomile tea after you eat your meals, especially in the evening, is really good to help aid your digestion to get rid of that abdominal discomfort that you might be feeling. Number two is reduce your carbonated beverage intake, especially when you're drinking these beverages with food. If you must drink your carbonated beverages, try to drink them separately away from food by themselves, but really try to limit your carbonated beverage intake. Number three is eating mindfully. As I mentioned earlier, making sure you're chewing your food really well when you're eating, trying to slow down the eating process, 
and avoid eating larger meals. If you can, try to eat smaller meals more consistently throughout the day, five to six meals even, which will help with your digestion as well as maintain your blood sugar levels. And if you want to see the video that I did on managing your blood sugar, you can click on the link right there. Number four is cutting back on sugary foods, drinks, and alcohol. As you know now, foods that are high in sugar are also high in FODMAP, and that also includes fruits and anything with processed, white, refined sugar, which is basically the worst thing that you can eat, in my opinion, especially for women's health issues. Number five, stay hydrated throughout the day. Drink a ton of water. This is gonna help you to improve your digestion and keep everything flowing for elimination, which will help you get rid of that abdominal bloating, cramping, gas, and discomfort. And last but not least, number six is do gentle walking exercises or like any kind of gentle exercise after you eat. And that might be walking around the block outside or doing some light yoga stretches, anything that'll kind of get your body moving. It's gonna help you to reduce that abdominal bloating and gas because it will help you to improve your digestion. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your health. And if you do experience chronic abdominal bloating, cramping and gas, especially if it is an issue that's starting to impact your life and your lifestyle in more ways than just when you eat, like you're having to schedule your bathroom times and making sure that you're near a bathroom just in case you have to run or you can't wear certain clothes because you feel and look like you're five months pregnant or if you're just so constipated that you're just you're feeling so uncomfortable when it starts to impact your lifestyle in that way it's really good to start being mindful of the foods that you're eating and being aware of some of the foods that are causing these issues and maybe you didn't realize they were causing them for you. So like I mentioned before, it's a really great idea to keep track in a food journal and keep track of the foods that you're eating when you're feeling bloated and this discomfort and then start to connect the dots together to see if there's a pattern. And then you can eliminate those foods from your diet to see if it helps to alleviate your discomfort and your symptoms. And then after about a month or so, Bring those foods back into your diet and see how your body reacts. And if your body doesn't like it, it will tell you very fast. And that's when you know, okay, maybe I need to eliminate this stuff out of my diet or just enjoy it in moderation. And there are lots of dietary supplements that can help you manage these symptoms as well. And Bioptimizers has a couple of great ones. The first one is their digestive enzymes called mass enzymes. And I'm just gonna read it to you quickly. It's a proteolytic enzyme formulation designed to aid digestion and support digestive issues. So these are really good if you are struggling with food sensitivities and you know, for example, pizza is a sensitivity for you, but you wanna go out with your friends for a pizza night, something like that. You can take a digestive enzyme like this before you go out, before you eat your meal, and this is gonna help your body to digest the food naturally and reduce your symptoms of abdominal bloating, cramping, and gas. There's also this one that Bioptimizers has and it's called the Gluten Guardian and it is also specifically designed to support gluten and dairy digestion. And this is all natural and it's really great to take before your pizza night as well or if you know that you're gonna be eating something that contains gluten or dairy. And one last recommendation, Probiotics are essential for everybody. This just helps you to maintain and manage your gut flora, which helps you to aid your digestion, elimination, and help to reduce that abdominal cramping and gas. P3 Ohm is a really great probiotic from Bioptimizers, and I would really recommend these three products if you are experiencing any kind of digestive issues like abdominal bloating, cramping, and gas. Our goal is for you to become the superhuman version of yourself, the Bioptimized Woman. If you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, click on the like and subscribe button below and click on the little bell notification to get notified when I create more videos like this. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What are some of the foods that are you are sensitive to? And by sharing that can help so many other people who are struggling with food sensitivities that are causing this discomfort. And if there's any other topics that you'd like me to talk about in the future, please let me know by typing in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, until next time.